everyone, this is Paul Wallen, welcome to the Music Producer channel. In this tutorial I will show you a relatively new feature in the Fellow Studio 20, sampling the instrument channels by creating a new direct wave instruments. If you have no idea how to do it, or even what this method is, let me show you something. When you have some very CPU greedy instruments like Omnisphere, Serum, Spire or Diva in the projects and it's getting freezing in there from constant crackling, you right click the channel that you want to get rid of in order to free up some CPU. Find Create Direct Wave Instrument command here, make sure that you have FL Studio 20th version, then we get to choose location for our forthcoming sample library, or in other words, instrument. And after that you will be introduced to those expert settings, which I will break down for you in every detail just in a minute, because these things are the most important part that is responsible for this high quality sampled copy that requires almost no CPU, copy of your original third party VST instrument that presumably consumes a lot of those CPU resources. But this sampled copy, I must warn you, consumes your RAM. So you gotta have some free RAM for that. Because you gotta keep in mind every audio data in your FL projects, whether it's a sample, an audio clip or a sample library for contact or direct wave, is being stored in RAM. And let's admit that this is fair enough exchange a lot of CPU resources for let's say 15 megabytes of RAM. That's what my friend and the worldwide best EDM artist manager and producer Don Distributo calls a good deal. How did musicians get by before this method came in? What all the FL musicians did before with freezing instruments and some of the musicians which would use the different DOS still do, is exporting the whole pattern or song part into a WAV file and then putting that file onto the playlist to replace the pattern with the CPU hungry plugin or plugins. And maybe all the effects too this instrument has been processed with. By that you can get rid of any longer unnecessary instrument and plugin effects so your project wouldn't give you an ear cancer with that damn crackling. But doing this kind of audio freezing doesn't give you any actual options to change some notes in it. There is literally no flexibility at all. So, to have this flexibility and for some other purposes, ImageLine came up with the greatest thing possible for us, instrument channel sampling, as the way to freeze the whole instrument and leave all the control you might need to change notes. So to answer the question what it's actually for, first goal is to free up some CPU resources, powerful plugins always seek to consume plenty. Second goal is collaborations. When you work on a project along with your friend or producer colleague, there will be situations where you be swapping FL project and you who maybe started this FLP have used let's say Omnisphere and your friend doesn't have and of course he doesn't show a lot of desire to install this huge monster like Omnisphere and just get rid of his 60 gigabytes of free memory on a hard drive just to have a collab with a no name and that's when channel sampling comes handy where you can just save the third party plugins in its every sonic detail in the form of a sample library for the native FL Studio Sampler Direct Wave. But to achieve those very details in the sound, you gotta know how to handle those settings. And here's exactly how. First, you gotta choose your lower and upper notes. That would be the range where your instrument is going to have some audio data, in other words, notes. If you have, let's say, bass, that would be better if you would choose relatively low and narrow range of notes. Because that's just the bass. Let's be reasonable for a second. The next setting, the amount of keys for this specific zone on a key scale. Let's not be greedy here for uh, like hard drive space. Always make it one. That means that every node your synthesizer or plugin is going to be exported out in a sample library for direct wave. And if you will set every two or three nodes, the other notes between them are going to be just uh, pitched down or up uh, in order to like reduce the file size of your forthcoming instrument. And again, let's not be greedy here and set it to 1. Each note is going to be exported. And the next setting is the amount of velocity layers. That's pretty self-explanatory here. And those layers are velocity layers. And if your instrument is dependent of velocity, so you can shake it just like that, and the sound of an instrument somehow changes. That means that it's uh, velocity dependent. 
and you might want to set it to three or four because in every like preset for all of the VST synthesizers velocity behaves differently it may be just a cut of frequency variations it may be variations in like just a volume so this parameter behaves differently dependent on a preset or the sound that you're gonna use you might want to like change it from one to three or four and of course that's gonna increase the size of your of your instrument you might just want to be aware of it and the cycle layers those are like cycles of a sound also increases the size of, of a forthcoming file how it works it's going to export it the second time or the third time or just uh, any number that you will set it to you might consider doing that if your sound changes like when you hit note one time and then you hit it the second time and if the sound changes every time you hit the note at the same velocity if the sound changes from time to time you might want to use those cycle layers so the same note would sound differently maybe you might want to use it but for synthesizers for electronic sounds that's not the case i think so you might just keep it at one when to stop exporting each note that's just also self-explanatory here if you will choose like uh, on silence it's gonna wait for uh, silence and the sound and then stop exporting each note and you might say when the silence supposed to come when my instrument has a sustain parameter as long as I hold the note it's playing back and of course th there is a release option and the sound will be released after like one bar and if you need you can set it to two bars or three or more and that's when the release comes, the exploring algorithm sustains sounds. They wait for uh, one bar if you set it to one, and then comes the release. So in ADCR envelopes, there is a R parameter, and it stands for release, of course. And that's when it comes. And release may actually last for some time. So when the release will be done, then the silence comes, and of course that's when the export is going to stop. I suggest you just uh, leave it at one and if you have some pads, long freaking pads, each note of a chord lasts more than like one bar, maybe two bars or even more, you should set it to of course higher, maybe two or three or four. Quality settings. Now that's pretty easy and you probably already know it. So I suggest you set it to 128 or 256. That will take a longer time, but those settings are worth it. And processing options, you might want to like keep all the effects on this instrument. And I'm talking about an effects on the mixer track that your instrument is routed to. You might want to leave the processing of those effects after you like saved this instrument. And you also might want to leave the mastering effects. So the effects on your master track. I suggest you don't do that because oh, you're gonna save this instrument inside the like the project already. After you saved it, it's gonna open up in your project and it will be this way or the other going through master track. So I suggest you don't implement this option very often. And now we can hit this button and wait for some time. Nice. And just to check on the accuracy of this kind of sampling, you can go ahead and make sure that those two sound exactly the same, or at least very close to that. And the flexibility is in the control of notes and basic sound parameters and effects inside DirectWave. You can still adjust the ADCR parameters for volume and filter cutoff. And all the basic sound effects like reverb, delay, chorus, distortion and others are waiting for you right here. That's how good this kind of new age freezing is. Instrument channel sampling in FL Studio 20. Probably some of you already knew that FL Studio 20 has this feature, but I hope that I have helped at least a little bit to break those setting details down for you. If this video has been helpful for you, you just get to hit the like from all of your Google and YouTube accounts, from all of them. 
And if you're somehow new to this channel, the most important and life-changing things for you right now are to punch the subscribe button. And after that, make sure that you hit this bell. And you hit this bell so hard so your neighbors hear it. Yeah, those poor neighbors which have already lost their mind hearing your crazy sounds from FL Studio. And I have to say bye now. It's been Paul Wallen from the Music Producer Channel. And I will see you in the next videos.